Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to the lesson number 14 of the series of tutorial on how to build a premium theme for WordPress. Welcome again. In this tutorial, we are gonna finally start to create, to code our front end. Uh, in the previous 13th lesson, we basically coded just the backend, just the sunset custom admin area, where we coded all the options that we want to give the user the ability to edit. Now we have to style finally the front end. If we access our front end, you will notice that it's completely empty. There's nothing because we didn't code anything. We created the basic files, but we didn't code anything. So let's get started. Let's access our code editor and let's access the header.php. What I wanna do, I wanna start with the head. I wanna start with the top to bottom. Of course, it's not gonna be linear because if we access the design file, the Photoshop file that you can download uh, for free in the description below the video, uh, you will notice here we have a lot of different options. We have a custom background area, we have a custom logo, uh, the uh, center menu, we have whole different post types, different styles for each post types, then we have a load more and a really simple footer. Plus we have a really nice sidebar that it's gonna slide from the right every time we click the sidebar button. And inside the sidebar, we have the widget area with a bunch of custom widgets, custom options, nicely styled sections. So I'm gonna try to follow the logic of coding from top to bottoms, but of course, Coding is not always logic. It doesn't follow the logic of top to bottom. So sometimes it's gonna jump back and forth from different sections, but it's gonna be fairly easy. It's something that we already saw in the WordPress 101 for beginner developers. So nothing new, nothing too, too complicated. Let's go back in our text editor and let's start coding our header file. So the first information that I wanna put is actually a comment because if you notice every premium theme has a comment for every template or every page that uh, the theme comes with. So let's start the comment of PHP and let's write something like, this is the template for the header. And then we can use at package. And if I remember correctly, we already used a package name that could be should be in the uh, style.css. I didn't, so we can add this tag at the end of the list of tags. The tag that we want to add is text domain. The text domain is mostly used or like only used for actual text to um, echo some specific um, content, some specific inline content and bind this content to a specific text domain. And in this case, it's going to be a unique name of our theme. So in my case, I want to use the package alicad underscore sunset. And this is gonna be my text domain. So I can use this text domain to refer the package of my theme. So every time I create a um, section, every time I create a file, I'm gonna use package uh, alicat sunset for the front end. If we access one of the file of the back end, we will notice that sometimes I use sunset theme. So we could also use this one if we wanna keep it consistent between the front end and the back end. And I strongly suggest you to do so. So let's change this one. Let's access the style.css and let's change the text domain to sunset theme. So everything is consistent. Now we can start coding our actual header. First of all, let's create the doc type HTML, close it. And let's open the HTML tag. Inside the HTML tag, we wanna use a um, WordPress function to print the actual language attribute of our theme because probably our theme could be a multi-language, could be not English, could be Italian, German, uh, whatever other country you want. So it's always better to um, give the option to WordPress to automatically handle the proper HTML tag to print whatever language we're using. We can close the tag at the end and we can open the head tag that is a standard HTML tag. 
Let's close the head tag to avoid mistakes and let's write some meta tags that are really important for our theme. If we want our theme to be consistent, if we want our theme to be easily scannable by search engines and to be properly validated by an HTML validator. So let's start with the meta tag of char set. The char set is important for a lot of reasons to decoding the proper uh, font, to decoding the proper text, if we use special characters, if we have accents, if we have some other stuff that are not standard letters, a proper char set is really important. And also this part can be handled automatically by WordPress by using the function blog info and specify it inside the brackets that we want to print the blog info char set. So WordPress automatically will print the proper char set of our blog. And we can close the meta tag here. Let's open another meta tag that this time is going to be name viewport. Viewport. The viewport meta tag is is really important for a responsive device, for multiple devices, especially for Apple devices and tablet devices that sometimes they uh, decide by themselves to not <laughs> print full screen everything and uh, force the scale of the touch zoom or the pinch to zoom uh, to your design. We don't want that. We want that the width of our theme is identical to the device width. So our width, our theme is going to be always 100% and not scaled down. And we can force it also with the initial dash scale attribute equal to one. So we're saying to whatever browser is going to crawl this page to uh, put our theme at 100%, like don't scale it down and put the, the width as the device width and not smaller or bigger. Also here, there's a typo with it's equal to device dash width. The other meta tag that I want to use is the link rel profile. This link rel profile is kind of tricky because it's necessary to an HTML5 validation. But if you try to validate it with an HTML5, is going to trigger an error, but it's always better to have it because it's a standard profile tag that is necessary for HTML. And in this case, we have to uh, specify a specific URL where these informations of these specific profiles are. And the standard um, HTML URL is this one. You can find it pretty much everywhere. Anyway, is gmpg.org slash xfn slash 11 and it's fairly standard so let's use this one the other one i want to use the pingback url the pingback url is something that you want to activate especially if you want your website to scale up on the search, search engine results page or the serp if we want the pingback URL to be active, we want to give the ability to other blogs, to other uh, websites, uh, whatever platform to ping back our website. So we need a URL in order to do that. And WordPress has these options by default, of course, with, again, the blog info function. So let's create the link rel, and in this case is a pingback, and the href is going to be managed by WordPress. So let's open and close the PHP tags and let's write blog info, open the brackets. And inside we have to specify, of course, ping back underscore URL and semicolon at the end. And let's close the meta tag. So before uh, passing to other meta tags and concluding the header section, I want to spend a little bit of time on the pingback because sometimes we don't want the pingback URL to be active on the home page. We don't want the pingback URL to act to be active on a specific uh, front page that is not a blog post or sometimes because in the uh, administration panel we have the option to deactivate pingbacks. We want to avoid WordPress to print these automatically if the pingback is deactivated. If the pingback is deactivated and we leave this code here, this code is going to be empty. So 
the browser will recognize that there's a, there's a pingback rel attribute, but the attribute is empty. So we want to hide this section in the case of uh, the, the page is not a single post or a single page, or the pingback URL um, option is deactivated in the backend. To do that, we have to use, of course, a prebuilt function of WordPress. So let's open and close the PHP tags. And let's write if, let's check if this page is singular. So is, sorry, singular, yes. So this page is not the front page, it's not the home page, but it's a singular uh, page. So it's maybe about contact page, uh, it's uh, a blog post. So whatever page it is, as to check that this page is not an archive or is not a search result or is not the uh, generic blog loop, it has to be a singular page. And plus, other than being singular, so double ampersand, you can write also and all uppercase, but it's kind of standard to use double ampersand and the option is the pings underscore open. Also, this one is a WordPress function to check if the pings is open. We have to check if this current object, this current query object has the pingback URL open. So to do that, we have to get underscore the queried, query, sorry, queried, it's kind of complicated, queried object and open and close the brackets. So if the pings open of the current queried object is true and this page is singular, we can print semicolon after the last bracket, we can pr print the pingback meta tag. Otherwise, just open and close and end if to conclude the if. So only if these two statements are through, we want this to be printed. Otherwise, it's going to be empty. And here at the end, as a last statement, we have to put the WP underscore head function to call all the other functions inside the head HTML. And we can remove this space. Here we can put a space maybe if you want. And let's open the body tag. And inside the body tag, inside the actual HTML tag, we want to print automatically the class, whatever class the WordPress is using to style our body. To do that, we have to use the WordPress preview function called body underscore class. Inside here, we could specify a custom class that we want. All this info that I'm writing, the body class, all the meta tags, I already touched these arguments in the WordPress 101 for beginner developers. So if you're confused, if for you I'm going too fast, I suggest you to take a look at that specific video where I go really, really slow and I explain in detail every option that you can have. For now, I'm going really fast because it's something that I already talked about. It's something pretty standard, pretty basic. So it's not really interesting and I want to keep going and building my theme. So let's save this. Before checking the front end, let's access our footer file. And right after the footer, we want to close the two tags that we opened in the header file. So we opened the body class and then we opened the HTML class. Also, oops, <laughs> also here, if we want, we can use exactly the same tag at the beginning, exactly the same comment. So we can copy these and put this comment at the beginning of the footer file. So this is the template for the footer and the package is sunset theme. Let's save it. Let's access our front end. Let's refresh it. Of course, we don't see anything, but if we access the page source, we will notice that inside here, we have a bunch of different things. We have a lot of stuff that we couldn't see before because it wasn't generating properly. Here we have, as I told you, the body class with the uh, default classes of WordPress. So it's detecting that we have an admin bar, the, 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 the no customized support and a lot of bunch of other section. Here also we have the admin bar that sometime someone likes it, someone hates it. 
I personally don't mind it, but just for this tutorial, I want to deactivate it. So I don't want to see this admin bar, especially because it's creating a lot. It's including a lot of files, JavaScript files, it's including CSS files, and it's creating this gibberish here that I don't really like. So let's access our backend and in the user section, let's access our user and let's uncheck the show toolbar when viewing site. Update the profile. Let's refresh the source code and it, this is way cleaner than before. We have just the standard thing, the thing that we define, the body is pretty much empty and we have the standard WordPress source code. If we refresh, of course, here, everything's going to disappear. Now what I want to do, I want to input a bunch of custom styles, especially my style, the style of the theme and the bootstrap style, because I decided that my theme is going to be based on the bootstrap framework from Twitter, because I really like it. It's really solid. I like the grid. So we will use bootstrap as a base grid for our theme. To use bootstrap, you have to go on the website getbootstrap.com, click on the download button. I suggest you to download bootstrap here, don't download the source or the SAS that you have to compile. Of course, this is not really indicated, especially when your website is ready for now, because we are developing the website. We are in full development mode. We don't need a um, more streamlined version. So it's fine to download the entire package. But before releasing our theme, uh, when our theme is going to be ready, what we have to do, we have to go in the customized section and decide what we want to keep and what we want to remove. We have to really be careful on the weight of our source files on how heavy and how many kilobytes are occupying in our theme. So we should spend a little bit of time here to customize what we need, what we don't, especially like if we don't use any models, if we don't use any carousel functionalities, which to we should uncheck these jQuery plugins. If we use just in Bistra, we use just the grid, just keep the grid system and untoggle everything else. If you don't use tooltips, popover or pagers or badges, whatever. We still don't know yet. I mean, we know a little bit what we're going to use based on our design. We can we we can predict what we're going to use and what we're not going to use of Bootstrap, but it's never so straightforward. So it's I I always download the entire package. I use whatever I want without any limitation. And then before releasing the final uh, theme, the final product, I go here in a customized file. I check which options of bootstrap I used and then I streamlined everything. I already downloaded bootstrap and I insert all the source file in their respective folders. So we have the CSS folder with my bootstrap.min.css, the JS folder with bootstrap.min.js and then the fonts folder. We have to move the fonts folder outside the CSS folder. At the beginning of this tutorial, of this series, I put my custom sunset icons inside the fonts folder, uh, but Bootstrap by default, the uh, structure accepts the fonts folder in the basic roots, in the basic root of our theme. So instead of uh, changing the source code of Bootstrap, let's, it's better to move this folder outside in the basic file three in the base file three. So we're going to have CSS, fonts, image, include JS, all in the basic file three and bootstrap will work. It will be easier also in the future. If we decide to update bootstrap to a future version, the folder structure is the same. We don't have to update manually the source code. So now what we have to do, we have to go to our enqueue file and enqueue properly our CSS. But before doing that, I want to create a new file called just simply sunset.css. And this is going to be my basic file where I'm going to create my own custom code to customize and create my custom style for my theme. So now we are set to go and we can access the file inside the include folder, the enqueue file. 
Here, if you notice, I already used this file to enqueue some admin uh, files inside the administration panel. I don't need to edit that, I can keep it, I don't need to create another file, this is pretty streamlined, it's not gonna create any confusion. The thing that I have to do, I have to keep the two uh, functions always separated because we don't want the front end style to be enqueued in the back end and vice versa. So let's go down here, let's paste the comment style and let's put front end enqueue functions. Let's create a little bit of space so it's going to be at the center of your screen and here we can create a function. So I can create a function called sunset underscore load underscore scripts and brackets, curly brackets, let's open here and let's reuse exactly the same code that we used in the previous lessons where we register style and we enqueue the style. So let's do exactly the same, but also in this way we can use the streamlined version we can use directly the enqueue style because I don't need to register the style and then enqueuing the style in some different pages because I'm enqueuing the basic style, the bootstrap that has to be enqueued everywhere. I don't need to register it before so I can copy the WP enqueue style and let's use bootstrap CSS this URL, bootstrap.min.css. The version of Bootstrap that I downloaded is the 3.3.6. Always put the correct version here so you will know what you're actually using. Let's put all to be printed everywhere. And we have to do the same with the script. We want to enqueue the JavaScript version of Bootstrap in our front end. So also in this way, we can put Bootstrap JS Bootstrap dot min dot JS, and also in this way is dependent on jQuery and the three point three point six, and through because we want this to be in the footer. Let's save it. Uh, if you notice here, I named these two in queue style and script also bootstrap at the same time. And it's not a problem because automatically WordPress is going to add dash CSS and dash JS to my in queue script. So it's not going to create any issue. That could create an issue if I want register the style and then enqueue the style in a specific page. I need a unique name, otherwise that could be really, really confusing. So uh, just bear in mind to use a unique name when you actually need it. And now to conclude, we have to write the user action to actually call the function and enqueue the script and tell WordPress what it has to do with this function. So let's write add action, open and close the brackets. The first statement is the actual action that we want to call and the action is wp nq nq underscore scripts. And the second parameter is the function name, then in my case is sunset load scripts, stated as a string. So inside single quote. Save it semicolon at the end, of course, save it. Let's go back in our front end. Let's refresh it. Let's view the page source. And here, as you notice, now we have our style sheet that is going to be with an ID bootstrap dash CSS with our URL that's pointing to bootstrap with the version of bootstrap that we want. And plus we have the minified version here. So here, one thing that is missing is jQuery. But by default, WordPress is putting jQuery in the header, something that I don't really want. I mean, it's kind of okay, it's not that heavy, but if we want to really optimize things, we should put jQuery in the footer, we should load jQuery in the footer before anything else. And I don't really want the migration of jQuery because I'm going to use jQuery still the version one, I'm not going to use version two, so it's pretty comfortable. What I can do to force jQuery to move in the footer is using a specific 
couple of scripts, a bunch of scripts for WordPress to force WordPress to not load the default jQuery and put it in the footer. So still remaining in the sunset load scripts, let's do everything before the first NQ script because we want to do everything before loading other JavaScript files. jQuery has to be the first file to be loaded in the footer. So what I want to do is I want to call a function of WordPress called WP underscore deregister script is the deregister script actually does what it says. It's deregistering a script. So it's canceling a specific script inside WordPress and it's saying to WordPress, even if you have this script registered in your backend, don't use it. I don't want to use it. So the script I know what I want to delete is jQuery. Semicolon at the end, save it. Let's go back in our front end. Let's refresh it. And if we access now the page source, we will notice that here we don't have any more in the header jQuery is not included anymore. So now what we have to do, we have to print jQuery here. And if you notice here also bootstrap disappeared. Why is that? Because we specified in the array of dependencies jQuery. So if jQuery is not loaded, Bootstrap JS cannot be loaded. In order to avoid uh, an error to be triggered, it's always better to put a specific dependencies. So if the source file that we need is not loaded, WordPress is not gonna load other files, it's not gonna trigger any error. I mean, our website will be broken <laughs> a bit, like some functionalities depending on jQuery. They're not gonna work, but at least it's not gonna load unnecessary files and the user can still experience a little bit our website with simple integrations and simple stuff not related to jQuery. So now what we have to do, we have to actually download jQuery and put it inside our footer. To download jQuery, you can go to the actual official jQuery website, jQuery.com, and download the minified production ready version. I suggest you to download the 1.11.3 because it's the most comfortable also with Internet Explorer. The two, uh, the version two from the version two jQuery dropped the support for Internet Explorer and I'm kind of cool with that, like I, I agree, let's not support that crappy browser anymore, but unfortunately it's still used by a lot of users, so let's still support it. Let's put our newly uh, downloaded file inside here, .js, and if we want we can simplify things by writing simply, simply jQuery.js. We're gonna put the version anyway inside our register script. Let's go back in our in queue. Let's use this time the WP register script because we wanna register and then in queue the file. And maybe sometimes we don't wanna in queue the script jQuery everywhere. So let's use WP underscore register underscore script and the string handle as to be of course as a string jQuery. The string search as usual get underscore template underscore directory URI dot to connect the strings and then the URL of our jQuery file slash JS slash jQuery dot JS. The dependencies doesn't have any dependencies so it's false. The version we have to specify the correct version that is 1.11.3 and in the footer this time we can put it through we want the file to be enqueued in the future and now we can enqueue the wp underscore enqueue script and here we can simply specify just the unique id that we decided that in our case is jquery save it Let's go back in our front end. Let's refresh it. And now we have finally the script jQuery enqueued in the footer, not in the header. And because finally the dependencies is true, Bootstrap has jQuery, also Bootstrap is printed here. So now we have pretty much all the file that we need. The only file that it's missing is my style, the sunset. Uh, .css, the standard file. So just duplicate the WP in queue and let's just put sunset. So it's going to be called the ID sunset dash 
CSS. And here, let's put sunset. No dependencies. The version is the 1.0.0. And also, this one is old. Save it. Let's go back, you know, where front end, refresh the source code, and check here. Also, we have the sunset. So I want the sunset, my file, to be underneath bootstrap because bootstrap has the grid so it has to be downloaded before my custom settings so now we have everything we need to start coding our uh, amazing theme we have a proper header we have all the uh, style sheet file that we need and we have the proper javascript file that we're going to use in the next lesson, we're gonna start coding the proper header. So we're gonna use the custom header option that we activated in the backend. We're gonna print the menu and we're gonna print this nice logo with our font icon and the subtitle decided in our backend as well. So it's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you like my tutorial, please spend a couple of minutes to check the support page to see all the different things that you could do to support me and my channel and help me to do better video and better tutorials for you. So as usual, I hope you enjoyed this video and until the next lesson, guys, happy coding.